So this is a 2015 GMC Terrain Denali all-wheel drive V6. This is my own car. It's not for a customer. I don't plan on selling it, so I wasn't in a hurry to get it done. So it's going to be the center of attention for a few how-to videos. It stuck its nose out where it didn't belong, and somebody tried to take it off. Actually, they did kind of take it off. No airbags deployed, no seatbelt pretensioners deployed. It still ran and drove. The radiator was cracked at the bottom, so I couldn't run it for long. I had taken the drive shaft out of it because I towed it back from Pennsylvania and with the back wheels on the ground. If the drive shaft's in, you risk ruining the transmission, so I did pull it out. So it was basically just freewheeling the whole way back. Now I'm going over some of the writing from the insurance adjuster when they totaled it. These are notes for parts that they want to replace or remove for paint, uh, missing parts. These are helpful when you're bidding on the cars in the auction online if you don't get to see them in person. And that's the way most people that buy in volume buy their cars. It would be nice to look at everything in person, but it's not always possible. Like I said, this one was in Pennsylvania. I'm in Chicago. They wanted to replace this headlight. It has two broken tabs. It's about $200 aftermarket, so there'll be a how-to video on how to repair plastic. We'll fix that headlight and a couple other pieces. We'll have a better view of all this damage once we get the motor and transmission out of it. You can see exactly what we're working with. But this just gives you an idea what the car looked like when I picked it up. We're going to fix that fender. And the main reason why is I don't want to have to blend into the driver's door. So if we repair the fender, we have plenty of blend room for our paint. So now let's start pulling the motor out. First thing we're gonna do is pull the hood off, get it out of the way so we got plenty of room to work. The hydraulic prop rod, you just pull that little tab out a little bit, pop it off, you don't have to take it all the way out, then you gotta fight it to get that clip back in. And just pull the four bolts off for the hood. I don't have to worry about scratching the tops of the fenders, they already had dents in them anyway. Now we're going to pull anything that's plastic that's good off. Bumper brackets, the headlight. When we start pulling it on the frame rack, anything plastic is going to start cracking, so we'll just get it out of the way. To release that plug on the back of the headlight, you don't have to slide the safety back if you can get a screwdriver in to release the tab. You can even plug it back in the same way. I hate those little safety tabs, so I try to do this whenever I can. This is something I always forget. When you're pulling the interior out, before you pull the motor out, you want to disconnect the seats their power and you have to slide them all the way forward to unbolt them. So it's a lot easier to do it now when the car has battery power. If you drop the drivetrain and then later on you decide you need to pull the interior, you have to hot wire the seats. Adds a few minutes on your labor time so it's easier just to do it now. It's only two bolts in the back and one for the seat belt and then one plug underneath. Did that on both sides. Now we're going to put the lift under it. Normally I would put the front arms underneath the subframe, but since we're dropping the subframe, I have to position them a little further back. You also need to account for the fact that the car is about to become 500 pounds lighter in the front end, so you need to position the lift so it's not too back end heavy. Now 
Now we can lift it up. To drop the exhaust, I pulled the rubber hangers off. I left one in the center and I unbolted it. Then I held it up, pushed it forward onto the flex pipe and lowered the back end down. Once it was on the ground, you could just disconnect the flex pipe and pull it back. That way one person can take the exhaust down by themselves. To put it back in is just the opposite. One person can do it. Now I disconnected everything, all the hoses, wires, cables. So now we can drop the subframe down. You want to drop this onto a cart that moves in 360 degrees. If you drop it onto a cart that just moves forward and backwards, it's nice for moving the motor around. But when you try to put it back in, you're never totally centered by eyeballing it. And it makes it really hard when you can't slide the cart side to side. So you want something that moves all around. Once you start lifting it, lift it a couple inches at a time and check and make sure that no wires are caught. Make sure you disconnected everything. Things have a way of finding their way into other stuff and get, get caught on things. If you just start lifting it up, you're going to end up tearing wires and hoses. So just lift it little by little and keep checking until you're sure that there's nothing that could come in contact with anything else. Like I say, wires always find a way to snag themselves on something. So now that our motor's out, we can take a better look. That frame rail, got a pretty good kink right there. There's the back side. This one's got a pretty good kink. This one's also pushed in. The car that hit it hit it right on this rail, so it went over and in. The other rail just kind of went over. The reinforcement pushed it over. The upper radiator support really didn't move all that much. It moved with the aprons a little bit. So when we cut the frame rails off or pull them over and remove the aprons, our upper radiator support will go right back where it belongs without much pulling. So there you go. My first how-to video. Or an introduction to my how-to videos and the car that we're going to be seeing a lot of with some tips on pulling a drivetrain thrown in there. The next video is actually going to be more of a how-to. It's going to be pulling the car on the frame rack and explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's really an unnecessary step. It was more for video purposes than actually work purposes. It didn't need to be done and I'll explain that in the next video. If you're watching this video and you're just starting out, don't get discouraged if you don't have a lift in your garage. I've dropped drivetrains out of cars with nothing more than two jacks and a furniture dolly. So it can be done. In the next video, we're gonna use a frame rack, but there are replacements for frame racks too. And when I'm all done showing you all the fancy tools and the ways that all this stuff is done in the shop, I'll show you ways that you can do this at home and ways that I have done it at home myself. Sometimes it's quicker. You don't need a whole frame rack to pull a radiator support out. So if you guys have any suggestions for new videos, go ahead and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought of this video, what I did right, what I did wrong. Give the video a big like if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe if you aren't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.